My name is Honorable Andy Umeto. Um, I have a question in two dimensions. The first I have is because most of us are Christians and um, we want the world to know that we actually practice what we preach. But when we enter into marriage, we discover that most men become spectators in their home. The number two? Okay. We become spectators in our home. How? So how do we... How? What do you mean? Because we do not want Trouble. to make problems in our homes. Okay. Therefore, most things that happen at home, a man just watch. He doesn't talk. So that the world will not see him as being a troublemaker. A troublemaker. So how do we overcome that challenge? Okay. S Second we, one, sir. Before you go, women, is that true? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Women say no. Okay. Men, is that true? Yeah. Men, is that true? Yeah. Okay. We are coming. It's a family meeting. We go reach every side. Go ahead, sir. So the second question is um, the issue of trust. So many women feel that no matter how good a man is, that he still he cannot be trusted. How can we overcome that challenge, sir? Women, is that true? Is that true? We men, is that true? Huh? Uh, uh, the voice of the men are low. It's like they need to take permission from their wives to answer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, let's start with the first one. Praise the Lord. Uh, you see, I don't believe that men should abandon their responsibility as leaders in the home. Uh, when you do, you create more problem than uh, the crisis you are trying to avoid. There are husbands who, like he said, see this one, they won't get involved. See the one they won't get involved until things are getting bad. Now those of them that do that they hurt their marriages. Now the balance of it is getting involved how? Some people don't have manner of communication. They don't have good manner of approach to things. So getting involved is the shout, the scream, they pound the table. They beat their wife. They harass everybody in the house. They mess up things. Leading your home is not by noise. Leadership is influence. Come on, are you with me? Leadership is influence. You don't need to make noise for your words to be obeyed. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Uh, I don't have to be a violent, arrogant, insultive, quarrelsome pastor to get gateway to obey me. Can you accept that? I don't have to be that. It's just simply have moral authority by your character. And then have a model, a vision for your home. And they begin to walk that vision. And keep constant communication with your spouse. And then things can run. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking about. Things can run. The problem is that there are many angry men. Who don't know how to pass their 
message across. They don't know how to negotiate. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to interact. And that's very wrong. Now, does it mean that if also your wife or family members are doing the wrong thing, that you shouldn't confront it? No. There are times a man puts his feet down and says, this will not happen. But he shouldn't devolve into quarrel. I've never had to do that. But there are many times I've said to my wife, that you won't do. That will not happen. And say, this is what's going to happen. I put a rule on that and moved on. Now, she, she knows enough in the relationship that I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to beat her or slap her or insult her. It won't happen. But I have, because of the influence of my person, Build enough moral authority to get her to do that. I made a comment on the pulpit some time ago. I said, and it's something I've said to my wife before in the house. I said, since I married you, can you mention four or five major decisions I've taken that took this family backward? Give me three or four or five decisions that I took as a husband that made our journey difficult. When a person sees you that one year, two years, three years, five years, ten years, you listen to God. You take steps with carefulness. You say this is the target and you achieve it. You're working on this and working on that. And the vision is clear. And the person can see ease in their life. It's easy to follow. Can you accept that? It's easy to follow. But when this decision failed, the other one failed, the other one failed, God told you this one, it didn't work, the other one there, everything around is confused. It doesn't give the person confidence to follow. Please, what I'm saying is that true doesn't give confidence for everything becomes a debate so it helps you to have moral authority so what you do is number one build your communication skills know how to engage and know when to engage that it doesn't have a crisis but never Look at an issue that you should engage and refuse to engage. It's just that you must know timing on when to come in. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. Am I wasting time here? Yes. You must know timing when to come in. If you do the right thing at the wrong time, it's called a mistake. If you do the wrong thing at the wrong time, it's a blunder. You're not hearing. You have created a catastrophe. So, right thing at the wrong time. Mistake. What do you gain? Resistance. Wrong thing at the wrong time. Blunder. Catastrophe. But when you do the right thing at the right time, that's when you see success. That's when influence works. Can you accept that? That's where the problem is. Now the second thing is about trust. Uh, trust is not an easy commodity. We begin with faith. We get to trust. Anybody hearing me say yes? Is anybody hearing me? Uh, when you are getting married, when you are cutting, the person is putting faith in you. People when you are tired of me, tell me. Are you catching what we're just in about? When you're getting married, somebody is putting faith, confidence in you. It's not trust. It's faith. Do you know that walking with God, you start with faith. 
Do you know, it takes a very long journey for people to learn to trust God. You're not hearing me. Huh? Let me explain. How many of you have read the verse that said, all things work together for good to them that love God? Have you read it before? Huh? Do you know that for you to get to the point of that conviction doesn't happen in one year, two years, sometimes five years of Christianity. That is why anything that happens in your life, you are fighting to gather yourself back. But then, where you come to trust God is when you look back after many years and you saw the things that look like wrong. You are not hearing me. You saw the testimony we read on the fire prayer a few days ago. The sister that said she sowed a seed and trusted God to be promoted. And the promotion didn't happen. And she felt bad. Anybody remember? And then suddenly last week Monday, they fired all those people that were promoted. So she said, Kai, God was preventing me from being fired though. You are not hearing me. You see, when things like that, when she didn't get the promotion, what is the first attitude? Disappointment. People, is that true? Disappointment. So, I prayed, I saw seed, and this didn't happen. But then, when you look back later, after some time, you say, Kai, God is good though. So that thing wasn't a bad thing. Are you with me? The first time you had faith in God. That's why you sowed the seed and prayed. Are you with me? But now you have come to the point of what? Trust. Next time when something looks like it's going wrong, you smile. You know God has a plan. Are you with me? Now, the same thing happens in marriage. So, you are starting a relationship and you put faith in the man. Now, many times people talk about trust only in the moral area. But that's not where the trust issue is, mostly. Are we together? Yes. Oh, dear Lord. Are we together? Yes. Okay, so the man has faith, the lady has faith in you. You didn't have money. You told her to trust you. Let's go through the wedding. Uh, believe me, things are going to improve. I'm a hard worker. And all of that. She followed you with your 30,000. And you went to the village. She begged her parents. Everybody did everything and they wedded you. And then she waited for one year. Hard worker is sleeping until 12. No idea. No result. She is wallowing in poverty. Her faith has not graduated to trust. She is still working on faith. Believing that one day it go better. And wasting time on it. That's a challenge. Are you still here? Now, she had faith in you that you would treat her well. You told her you loved her. And so she believed you. She had faith that you would never slap her. Never abuse her. And then, six months later, she does something you don't like. You flare up. And you lose control. And you talk and talk and talk until you cross boundaries. And it goes from expressing annoyance over what happened to insulting her person and her family. She had faith. That faith didn't graduate to trust. Maybe I'm wasting my time. She had faith that you wouldn't cheat on her. And then life went on until 
maybe one year, two years into the marriage, one day she's glancing through your Facebook messenger and sees one picture, a pornographic picture. You haven't slept with anybody. You have not gone out. But that picture has broken her trust. The faith she had can graduate to trust. I don't know if I'm making sense here. Today. So when people say people find it difficult to trust, no. Trust is end. Faith is giving. Maybe. Is anybody hearing me here today? So when somebody is relating with you, it's a relationship by faith. Faith is a substance of things what? Hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, when you build on that, the trust matures. The problem is this. That most men don't understand the meaning of trust. And most women too. Oh dear. If you are with me, say yes. yes. My wife says to me, uh, look at this. I told you a story of uh, somebody in this church that uh, a brother appealed to me and said, this young man is having a problem. Nobody can train him in school. Please, can you add him to your personal uh, students, your personal scholarship scheme. And I said, okay. So the young man sent me his text. And I said, no challenge. Send me what you need to go back to school. And all that. He sent me. I looked at it. I said, no. I have another student in this school. How is their school fees this amount? How is this? How is this? This is this. So I didn't reply for one week. I just didn't say anything. He kept sending text message to reply. Uh, this I kept quiet. But out of the week, the brother called me and said, "Ah, you have not replied. This young man, can he let him go back to school?" So I said, okay, I'm going to talk to him. So I called him. And I said, I saw the things you sent. I'm also having so so and so person. I mentioned the person that's a member of this church in the same school you are, and I'm the one sponsoring him, not his parents. What he sent to me to go back to school and what you sent are not the same. And he's a higher level than you. Why? He said, oh, that somebody told him that, you know, when you are asking somebody for something, you should raise it and say they cut it down. Can you see the mindset? Uh, can you see the mindset? Have you noticed that sometimes women who have that mindset, when anything they're asking their husband, they fled the price. All the men has left me alone here. If you're a man here and what I'm saying is true, wave your hand so that the women know we're not afraid of them. Okay, thank you. So, I'm going to the market. Everything has increased. Have you had anybody else? Everything has increased. It's the new language of the women. Everything has increased. Everything has increased. Has everything increased? I know everything has increased. Everything has increased. And then, because everything has increased, the pussy now is uh, 50,000. <laughs> you know, all of that, you know what it does? It erodes trust. Praise the Lord. And my friend brought a cloth for me. We, attend, we want to attend a function. So I want to buy a cloth for Sister So and So in the I want to buy a cloth from Sister So and So in the church. She brought the cloth. 
my husband the cloth is uh, 37,000 you give her the money and then if you are my kind of husband you call the sister and say sister why is your clothes very costly I said, what other does say for 25? Why is your own heart? You don't mention a price. He said, but sir, my own is just 23,000. How the women are quiet. <laughs> what do you do? Confront your wife? No. You put that in the file in the medulla blangata. Trust. You see, when people say somebody doesn't trust me, there are basis for distrust. If you help me say yes, there are basis for distrust. If you are in the bedroom and your phone rang and you jump out with soap on you, come and grab it. They are saying, you, you are not hearing me. You are your son is playing with the phone and baby, baby, using your phone to play games, and then suddenly your husband comes, you grab the phone, lock it. You'll be a foolish man to trust you. If you're always answering phone in the toilet, there are women every night they switch up their mass up. As they're coming back home. There are people, the people they relate with in the church, in the choir, in the ushering, in the protocol, anywhere. Their husband knows my wife chats or talks with this person, they're friendly. If you open their phone and go to the WhatsApp, there is no message. That's an alert to you that your wife has something she's hiding. Because if that man is her friend and she chats with the man and you cannot see any history of her chat in the phone, she's deleting the chats. Everywhere is quiet. Are we okay here? She's deleting the chats. The same thing for the man. Did I... The way people are looking at me is like I'm spoiling church today. That is the truth. Trust is... So if my son picks my phone and is using it to play his game and all of that and a text comes in and I have to quickly pew, grab it. What am I hiding? You are not hearing. That's what we are dealing with. So trust is and faith is given. So if you say women claim that men don't trust them, women should work, men should work hard transitioning from faith to trust. And that transition follows the person watching you make one decision after another. After. Let me give you a simple illustration. My relationship with my in-laws. My relationship, my wife's relationship with my in-law, my her in-laws. I promise my wife I'll protect her from anything that is going on. My sisters come to the house <clears throat> and they make this statement, make that statement. She followed me on trust that as the head of the home, I will protect her. My mother comes and is making trouble. My sister is making trouble. My brother is making trouble. My wife waits for me to intervene and stop them. And I keep quiet and say, it's my family members. The faith she has in me doesn't develop to trust. But if I intervene and I say, my sister, back up. My mother, back up. My brother, back up. I love you guys, but this is one flesh with me. 
if you are going to go to her pastoral me this is the boundary that faith immediately graduates to trust come what I'm saying is that true she knows this person so when we talk about trust trust is not just sexually trust is holistic and when people give you faith whether it's the man or the woman allow it to graduate to what? trust let's say I am working with somebody this is a gardener in the house a cleaner, a driver whatever I give you uh, 50,000 go and buy something you went and bought the thing it was 41,000 you come back you didn't come to me and say, ah, I got that thing at 41. This is a change. You just assume, oh, he's a rich man. He wouldn't mind. Are you with me? Immediately, you have, bit, you have erased trust. Please talk to me. You went to buy fuel. You came back. You told me you bought fuel of 20,000, 40,000. I told you what happened in my house. I noticed that every time diesel, diesel, diesel. So one day, they finished filling their tank. I went over there with a witness. I didn't tell the person what I was doing. I just checked where the tank was and all of that. I asked the person, can you bend and look? I wanted him to have witness. I didn't tell him. I acted as if I wasn't seeing it well. I said, bend and look. A few days later, they said, oh, there was no diesel. So I called the, I called the village meeting. <laughs> you are not hearing me. And asked them to explain. Hey, the git man, he talk up and talk down. I say, young man, calm down. Uh, 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 this thing you are doing, <laughs> you are no more intelligent than me. I said, he said hey, that the diesel was like it was leaking. I said, the amount of diesel in a tank. I said, you know this big, something like GMP, the one they use in the oil rig, filled up, put on something. And I, said, I said, if it leaked in this compound, it would be like a pool across this place. So, go wash it. <laughs> Let us... Let us get to the root of the matter. You see, that's what takes trust away. Have I answered your question? I spent time on this because I was using it to teach. Have you gotten it? So when we're talking about trust, people come to you as faith. Help them to build trust. If you had my voice, say yes. Okay, next one. Number two. Give the Lord a better clapping. Number two. 